All right, ladies and gents, we are clearing out some areas. I'm going to be sealing this hole that I made from cutting space for the oversized tires. I'm going to be filling in that hole today and removing the center console for the future of Renegade. Some people are going to hate what I'm about to do. But there's also some people that are going to think it's freaking crazy awesome. You know, it'll legitimately be the only ridgeline like it. The only one. <laughs> and it'll only be half of a ridgeline, really. But it's going to happen. Stay tuned. Let's do this. All right, guys, so this is what we got going with Renegade. <sighs> After much debate, I'm talking a year, trying to figure out ways to do it. The most simple and effective way is going to body swap the ridge line and the prodigal sun. We're going to take the body off of this and we're going to put Renegade's body on that. So we're going to have a straight axle, 400 horsepower, big block ridgeline. <laughs> it's going to be sitting on 37s by the time we're done. And you know what? After that, man, four link coilovers, 40. 50 inch tires i mean basically as far as we want to go with this thing you may be asking why why brady why are you doing this well because honestly i want a low gear i love the ridge line i love the trail the abilities that it has and all that but where it's at the way that it's built and manufactured unless there's some massive customization and i mean insane amount of customization and everything like that for one i don't know as much about the drive trains and stuff but the amount of customization and machining and parts that would have to be made i don't have those skills ability or technology to do all of that to make this ridge line to help renegade have a low gear the quickest most simple and cheap is the body swap also to be able to work on a ridge line i mean it is expensive parts for it are expensive parts for this thing over here cheap so even if it breaks it's basically just repairing a chevy a square body which cheap pennies on the dollar right so that is what's happening. Guys, come enjoy the journey. It is going to be a wild freaking ride. And it's going to be sick. So, hope you guys like what you're about to see. This is going to be a multi-part series. And, you know, it's going to be amazing. So, we're going to be body swapping the Prodigal Sun. Old GMC square body with the Honda Ridgeline. <laughs> Let's go! What I have going on is I got to repair the hole that's in here first, but we obviously are going to have to make room for the shifter for the T-case, right? And we're also probably going to need to bevel out 
and cut this area for the sh square bodies drive drivetrain. We are also going to have to hopefully not change too much ish, but we're gonna have to make a different cluster area for the wiring harness. I also have to figure out how to get um, or for the gauges, I should say, from the square bodies harness. But then I also have to figure out how to connect the power to all the interior wiring so that the windows and everything else works. That's the goal. Because if I can only change the dash and a little bit of the firewall in there and the center console to make it fit, I'm golden. I'm going to have some help throughout this build, guaranteed, because I'm still learning half this stuff. But I've been thinking about doing this basically since I got this ridge line. If it had a low gear or a possibility of just bolt on T case kind of thing, I would definitely would do that. Um, but everything that I've talked to, every person that I've talked to, everything that we've thought of, it's going to have to have new front end or a new back end or new both, have to rotate the engine, like all sorts of things. So it just doesn't make sense i want a low gear because i want to be able to crawl this thing i could try to do like uh a guy i'm talking to steve um down in california you know who you are um but he's got a body swapped kind of well i mean it's it's no it's just swapped um he's just swapped the chassis of an h1 hummer and stuck it on or stuck the ridge line on it has a divorce t case Boom, and he hooked it right into the H1 Hummer stuff. So there's a way to do that. Obviously, I could try to do the same thing with the with the big block and with the square body, but I want the only straight axle ridge line there is. I just that's what I want now. Um, I can always get another ridge line, take all my upgrades from this, throw it on that, and have souped up independent fast speed ridge line and then a straight axle crawler which would be sick <laughs> check this out pulling the carpet up so i gotta seal this in here but look at this this is how much crap has been coming in here <laughs> like i got <laughs> that's that's silt from jim creek right there that is insane but yeah so that's coming out um but yeah, I got a lot of things to adjust. I got to figure out what to do. The ECU, steering column, making a list of all these things that I got to figure out. So, I mean, obviously cutting, all of this isn't going to be a big issue. But it's going to be the computer stuff that is going to get me the most, I think. Adapt the steering column. Hopefully I can just, the steering column can adapt right to this one. That would be ideal. My goal is to keep as much of the ridge line stuff on the inside as possible so that I can have the luxuries of it. But mostly, I just want the windows to be able to work, door locks to be able to work, and the radio, the heater, and the AC. That's going to be my big things because you can wire in lights, you know, things like that. So there's a couple things we're going to have to figure out. But this is going to be quite the journey. Hey, Dominic, what are we doing with this truck? I'm making it a monster truck. We're making it a what? My monster truck. You're making it a monster truck? Yeah. All right. Okay, been working just a little bit. Not too much tonight. Pulled off the front here. Just a couple clips on the top for the plastic. Um, you know, and the clips for the bumper cover. Then, uh... It's only got three bolts on each side for the bumper. That bumper's pretty chintzy. <laughs> I mean, I didn't think it was very robust to begin with, but it's pretty it's pretty chintzy. Um, and then took off my skid plate, right? Now I'm measuring engine compartment, kind of getting a final measurement here. So obviously, there's a couple of measurements. It's a 3D thing going on. All right, so we are... We are measuring this stuff, and I got my nice little sketch, right? We got the Honda and the GMC or the Chevy, right? So we got to measure the engine compartment. So I have these down in my mind like crazy. So 
Coming from the back of the firewall, we have 40 inches to the front of this, this cross member here. So, on the Honda, go right here. From here to here, we got 40 inches. Now, from the depth, like where, where the post mounts to the subframe, let me show you this right here. Let's see if I can get the stand to work with me here. Right here to the bottom of this post right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from this point, which is going to be obviously contacting the Chevy frame at least. Um, it might be even lower than that, but at least that piece up to the top of the fender, right? Because we got to make sure we got to make sure that the air intake and engine and everything fits vertically. So. That is roughly the lowest point in the front. The lowest point in the front is about 20, we'll say 26. I think it's 26 and a half, but we'll say 26. Give us a little bit of play or minimum. So that is 26 inches in the front. Now in the back, or this point, uh, it goes ways down there. Let's see, where's that set frame actually? Basically. CV axle is so we're looking at to the hood or to the fender like 30 inches ish so 30 inches in the back now side to side within Obviously, within the subframe rails themselves, we're looking at like 38 almost, but we'll say 37. Thirty-seven inches. I'm not going to bore you with going and measuring the, the Chevy. But let me go do that real quick. Okay. All right. So I just measured it. Now I'm going between the frame rails out there. Because obviously we're just trying to fit in the engine. Make sure the engine can fit. So we can start figuring everything else out afterwards. Exactly where to put things and if we need to cut and adapt things. But this is crazy. So between the frame rails... Um, we have 30 inches on the GMC, 37 between the subframe, like the inside of the subframe. And that was the outside, the 30 inches on the outside of the GMC. We have 37 on the inside of the subframe. So this is significantly wider than the frame in there, which is great because the engine will fit no problem in there. So that, that's good. We'll actually have to put some mounts or some... Uh, cross members on the subframe connecting the subframe to that frame <laughs> apparently because it's too wide um 40 inches so on the gmc obviously when you have a, a front to back engine at least on the old ones right they had the firewall that was kind of barreled out a little bit so from the back of the barrel all the way to the like an inch in front of this side right an inch further past the radiator was 40 inches which from the back of that firewall the inside of this piece so basically to this cross member piece right here is 40 inches so it should fit um the radiator in there 
is um, 20, 22 inches. And, or actually, that is, it's a lie, I need to go measure the radiator. Um, that was the frame, front of the frame, to the top of the air filter in the front, and the back on the Chevy, or on the GMC, was 22 inches. Here, it's 30 in the back to that post where the subframe mounts, um, to the fender line right here. And then in the front to the fender line from the mounting post was 26 on the on the ridge line. 22 on the Chevy. 30 and 26 on the ridge line. So we have plenty of space in this thing, which to me is kind of insane how much more space or how much space is in that area compared to that. Um, just looks so much smaller, but with everything being up front, the transmission and the engine and everything, like, yeah, it's kind of nuts. Um, front to back, obviously, is a lot shorter. Um, at least from here to here. That's also probably why it feels a lot smaller that way, too. Uh, nonetheless, everything's looking like it's going to line up. So what I'm going to do now is find out where I'm going to park this beast. Where I'm going to park Renegade. Because what I need to do is I need to figure out, let's see if it work for you. Um, I need to figure out where I'm going to park it because anything from now on, I'm literally going to be making it immovable. So it needs to be somewhere where I can jack it up on a flat area and be able to drop the subframe out and the engine and everything because I'm going to start pulling it apart. So that should be tomorrow. Start pulling everything apart and whatnot. Something that's cool. Check this out. Total, total squirrel moment that I just had. But I was checking these fuses because there's got to be a way because I want to, there's got to be a way to keep the ridgeline interior and everything with the GMC engine. And I was looking at the fuse boxes. So, whoa. These fuses over here, or these connections, are for the battery. So, my thought was, if I can just connect the ignition power from, like, the starter over there to here, like, the power and the ignition and stuff, if I can figure out that from this steering column to the GMC motor, essentially, or from this fuse box to the motor, everything will stay the same. I just have to figure out how to get that engine harness power to get to this thing and then everything should work. That's my thought. I really have no idea. Um, this is, I'm flying by the seat of my pants and hopefully I'll be able to get some help from a couple buddies that know a lot more about this stuff. But where there's a will, there's a way. I don't have to know everything. I just have to be willing to learn everything. Um, and I know there's got to be a way to get power from that engine from this ignition, from a battery to the ignition back to the engine, right? Anyways, I'm pretty stoked about that. What was I talking about? Yeah, so I got to figure out where I'm going to park this thing because I'm going to start tearing into it and start making it immovable until it's resting on Renegade 2.0. It's going to be sweet. I'm so pumped. Anyways, um, yeah. I'm probably going to splice a lot of these together and shorten up the video for you because I think it'll be kind of drawn out if, if it's all just not edited very well. Hopefully you guys enjoy this build. I'm excited. Interior starting to come apart. Um, I'll show you that. So I got the dash pulled apart. Got the console pulled apart and working on getting a hole fix that I made when I cut the wheel wells. But got that all starting to pull apart because I got to make room, disconnect all this stuff, set it on top. All right, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Remember, like, share, and subscribe. See you on the next video. <laughs> Appreciate the support.